talk about the basics about how vector layers are stored. Vector layers, their geographic features, are stored as X and Y coordinates that can then be put onto a map. These um, X and Y coordinates are typically called vertices as we see these black points as we move along this line, or these black points here as we outline this polygon. Um, one thing to remember with a line, the first point and the last point are instead of vertices, those are called nodes. So the beginning and ending points are called nodes. And um, these are all single part features, but we could have a multi part feature where, for example, Hawaii, which is made up of several different polygons, is just um, is represented as a multi part feature so that if we select Hawaii, all of those polygons are selected. For each of these features that we see on the map and is comp comprised of these X and Y coordinates, we have one row in an attribute table um, associated with each one of these features. So features are linked to an attribute table which, which um, contains all sorts of different information which is stored in various columns of the attribute table. There is one unique ID associated with each of these features, in this case the object ID or the OID, and this is going to be a unique one that's um, uniquely associated in this case, three is uniquely associated with the state of origin. So a feature class is if we take a bunch of these um, features and we store them together as a layer. So um, a feature class is going to include both the spatial, spatial features and the table associated with them, or the attribute table, and um, these typically only contain one type of geometry. So if we're doing states of the United States, those are all going to be polygons. If there are highways throughout the United States, those are all going to be lines and so forth. And the format that these are stored in can be a variety of formats unique to GIS, such as shapefiles, geodatabases, and there's many other formats that are either built for GIS or can be brought into GIS. There's different sorts of models for how these things are stored. Probably the simplest model is something called the spaghetti model. And with the spaghetti model, each one of these features would be stored as a unique outline, and each one of those would have unique values in its attribute table. So you might notice here that although Oregon and Washington contain a boundary that is the same for both of those, Oregon would store that line. In, its, uh, in, its, in a spaghetti model, and Washington would store an identical line in that, but you would be able to, um, even though they're adjacent, this is actually stored twice. Um, it's good for its simplicity, but it does not allow us to do all of these sorts of analyses that we might want to do with GIS. If we want to do those sorts of analyses, we have to move on to a topological model. So topology just means that these lines are built with intelligence. This line is only stored once, and it knows that Washington is on one side of the line and Oregon is on the other side of the line. This is really nice because now we can test for things like adjacency. We can ask the question, is Oregon adjacent to Washington? And just by knowing that they share this one line, we would know the answer to that is yes. And then we can start doing even more um, more sorts of analyses like intersecting polygons and, um, and rebuilding the topology in order to get these proper relationships established all over again. So um, this can be really good for both spatial analysis or just finding things like as mentioned down here, if a county should be within a state but it, um, it goes outside of the state, we would easily be able to determine that with this topological model.